Kira, would you mind explaining to us what a plant is? A plant is a multicellular autotrophic photosynthetic eukaryote. Autotrophic means it's self-feeding, photosynthetic means it uses the sunlight to make its own food, and eukaryote means it has a nucleus and organelles. Its cell walls are made out of cellulose, and carbs are stored as starch. Chloroplasts have photosynthetic pigments, and they use photosynthesis to make food, and they use cellular respiration, which is the backwards equation of photosynthesis, to make energy. Molly, why have plants adapted to living on land instead of in the water? Well, some advantages are that there's a limited sunlight, there's abundant carbon dioxide, and initially there are few herbivores and little competition. Whitney, what were some of the challenges on land? Challenges were maintaining moisture within the cells, obtaining resources from the soil and air, and supporting the body of the plant in the air instead of the water. And finally, a major challenge was reproducing and dispersing offspring without water. Four lineages of plants. What's a bryophyte? This is an example of a bryophyte. It is a type of moss. Bryophytes are non-vascular plants, which means that they have no veins, no vessels, and no true roots. They live in moist environments very close to the ground. They evolved a cuticle, which is a waxy coating, to protect from drying out when they adapted to living on the land. They developed stomata, which are pores used for gas exchange. Swimming sperm rely on water for reproduction, and their spore is their dispersal unit. What's a seedless vascular plant? A seedless vascular plant, uh, for example, a fern, has sperm that swim through water and uses spore as its dispersal unit. It has a vascular system which transports water and food. The xylem carries water and minerals up from the roots, and the phloem distributes sugar, amino acids, and nutrients down from the leaves. What's a seed-producing vascular plant? Seed-producing vascular plants include gymnosperms and angiosperms. They both contain seeds, which allow for overland dispersal for fertilization. Water is no longer required for fertilization, and seeds can last for decades. Pollen is the sperm and can go through the air and travel a long distance. Gymnosperms are pollinated by wind and contain a naked seed without fruit. Angiosperms are flowering vascular plants. The flowers attract pollinators and the fruit attracts organisms that distribute seeds. Kira and Whitney out on a stroll through beautiful downtown Palo Alto. Now that we've learned so much about plants, we decided to take a look in our own front yard and see where we can find these plants. <laughs> As you can see, they're everywhere. Oh look, I think I found them all. Kira, here's a moss. Do you remember what that is? It's a bryophyte. Nice. Oh look at this flower. What is this? It's an angiosperm. And if you look over here, we have a gymnosperm. Clearly, they come in all shapes and sizes. Last but not least, ferns. <laughs> oh, let's see if we can find one of those. The search is on. As we make it to the fern, take a look at this beautiful blossom, blossoming angiosperm. As you can tell, flowers come in all different colors. On our right, we have some um, angiosperms, which are grasses. You wouldn't think that grasses are flowering plants, but oh, they are. I found a fern over that fence in the back corner. <laughs> Can you get there, Molly? <laughs> oh, we wouldn't want to disrupt the neighbors. <laughs> Woo! 